All right, so what's going on, everybody? It's been probably around two weeks now. I went to Paris last week, so I didn't really have time to upload a video. The reason why it took me this long to upload this video is because I'm working with a new animation software that I'm actually going to talk about in this video. So as you guys know from the previous video, I'm doing a couple of channel upgrades. So I got this new mic, uh, so the sound quality is just better. And also now I have like a tripod stand that my phone is standing on with like a light. So that already got better. And now I'm using this animation software, so hopefully I can make my videos more clear and easier to follow. That's kind of the goal of learning this new animation software. So it's a completely code programmatic way of animating and it uses TypeScript. So we're gonna look at that and basically how I created the following animation. What are generator functions? Motion Canvas uses generator functions to describe animations. A generator function is a function that can return multiple values. When the yield keyword is encountered, the execution of the function pauses and resumes only when the caller requests another value. The fundamental concept that Motion Canvas relies on is yield means the current frame is ready, display it on the screen, and come back to me later. With that in mind, let's take a look at how we can make this circle flicker animation. The first thing we need to do is create a reference to the circle we're going to add to the scene. We then add the circle to the scene using the view parameter passed to us by the generator function at the top. We now change the circle's fill property to red, yield, telling the animation to update and continue this process. This will flicker just once, but Animate Canvas has flow generators they use, for example, to loop this animation X times. All right, so let's actually take a look at how I programmed this using Motion Canvas, which relies on TypeScript to be able to programmatically make the animations. So every project.ts file, or every Motion Canvas uh, project actually comes with this project.ts file, which you can use to set up like some basic configuration stuff for your animations. So for example, in those code highlighting, like the syntax highlighting stuff that I did in the animation, I changed the theme to one dark theme mode from VS Code. And this took me like a ridiculous amount of time since the thing is with this uh, library is that the only docs you can get are the docs that are provided by the person who created it and the open source contributors. But there aren't any other Slack overflow or any other places where you can find help. So <clears throat> yeah, changing that was, was hell. It took me a long time just to get the style that I wanted to get. Um, but then I found that you could just download this NPM package and pass this style object in here. So that was nice when I finally figured that out. Um, so that's some basic configuration stuff. And then you can add your audio file so that in this built-in editor, which the framework also provides on the localhost 9000, you can actually start syncing your animations with the audio file that you have. So that's kind of the hard part of writing animations programmatically is that you also have to sync them with an audio file later. But this editor is a, like a game changer for that. It was it was quite easy. I'll get into how you actually do that later on. And then in this make project configuration, you can also pass in your scenes that you're going to be using in the animation. So for me, I had three different scenes. I had this initial scene, which was kind of the title, and then the scene that went through this stuff, if you guys remember, and then another scene talking about how to actually make the circle flicker. So that was that. So let's actually get into how to make these animations. So the first scene is pretty simple and I guess it's a good place to start. Like we said, it relies on generator functions, which I actually had never heard of from TypeScript, but it's a function that can return multiple values. And whenever the caller makes a call, it remembers where it left off or where the function left off and then continues to the following yield statement. So that's kind of how it works. And it passes you this view object, which you can use to add components, much like you do in React to the scene. So for example, if we look at how to build this simple scene, you can just add a rectangle, you add, you make the width and the height 100%, give it some color, align stuff, put a text and then generate a function. And that's as simple as how to create a scene. That's nothing animated, that's nothing text. And here I just, wait for a second. So that's a, this is where the anim animation starts. This scene is going to be playing for one second, basically. And then when it's done, the project thing or the project TS file is responsible for loading the next scene. So this scene is a lot more complicated. So we'll go through it a bit slower. 
but it starts first of all with this yield function which is a slide transition so here it plays a transition that's built in from the framework and just slides it from the left so you can see that if i turn the sound off it's going to come and then it slides this scene in from the left side so you can use these built-in things to make uh, programming a lot faster Right, so maybe now is a good time to start taking a look at these references that I've declared here at the top of the file. So the way that Motion Canvas works is that you add your components in much like you do in React to kind of create the view. And if you want to animate those, you have to create a reference to them so that you have access to them and their properties, such, such as their width, their height or the opacity and stuff like that. But you can also do a lot of other things besides animate them. You can also, for example, with this rect, I have a reference to this most outer rect, or rect is short for rectangle. You can add, for example, children to the view so that it follows the layout and follows that structure. You can also query through this rectangle to find children with certain properties and so on. So it basically just gives you access to this rectangle and all of its properties. So if we take a look, this is just creating the view, the initial view. So if you come here, you can see that it starts with this. It's creating that initial view by first creating a rectangle and then putting some code in it, which is these yield statements, which you can see here and uh, setting the properties. And that's it. Now, like we said, we slide in from the translation. We wait a couple of times and then this is where I now add to my view this image of the logo of the motion canvas. So when you play, that's the logo that comes in and then it's going to animate to the right. So that's a basic idea. You can add things to the view and then and then once they're added, you can animate them. So for example, here I've animated that logo to go from the opacity zero to one in one second. And then I also made it go from scale zero. So basically just it doesn't exist to scale one. So that's why when it first comes on the screen, it has this little animation property where as the icon is coming, it's getting more and more bright and bigger and bigger. So that's kind of how that works. And those uses still those yield statements. And you can do a lot of more complicated things that I that you saw in the animation video. So for example, you can move a you can move the logo from this point A to point B, but instead of a straight line, you're going to move it along an arc. So that's what you can see here. It moves along this kind of uh, arc. So that those are all built in functions that you can use. And then you can also have timing functions to make them ease in and out instead of going the same speed throughout the whole journey, stuff like that. And then this is kind of important in order to sync your animations with audio. You have this wait until function where if you declare wait until and give it a name, it will appear in the editor. So that will be here. And what that basically does is it pauses your animation until this certain point. So basically here, Nothing's going to happen because I didn't want anything to happen. And the moment yield is hit, that's when I fade all of the stuff, all of the text in the background out. So that the yield keyword is highlighted. So that's kind of how that works. And now again, nothing is happening. And the moment I hit this is when a new animation starts. So that just makes it a lot easier to sync, synchronize um, basically your animations and your audio. All right. So that kind of covers the basics of motion canvas and more or less what I wanted to cover in this tutorial. So how you can actually set stuff up in the scene, how you can make references to those objects you created, and then how you can animate them or manipulate the view that you've created. Now, I also want to talk about the legend who built this. He built it all in like three months, I think he said, and then he open sourced it after a year to get some extra contributions in. And I think the main things that happened were like improvements on this online editor thing. But it's crazy that one person can build this entire framework with all of these capabilities in three months. I mean, it's something to look up to, I guess. Also, the docs and the API, the way that everything was created is just super easy. The abstractions he's made makes it super easy on just fo to focus on animating and not to figuring out how the framework works. Basically, just put a yield in front of any animation and his abstractions will handle the work. So yeah, overall, just really happy with the framework. And I think I'm going to start using it to animate all of my videos. But yeah, I like to always ask for feedback. So again, let me know what you guys think. Um, maybe the tutorial was a bit less on web development today, but I think you could still learn something about TypeScript, which is the language you use every day to build web applications. 
um, with these generator functions. So yeah, let me know what you think about these animations. And also I got the feedback that a lot of people liked the series I started two weeks ago. So I am continuing that. I'm working on summarizing chapter three now. So hopefully that's out by the end of the week. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. See you guys hopefully in a week.